So welcome back to this channel. Uh, this is part 4 of the SU35S flanker build. This little puppy. And as you can see it's time for painting and weathering. So that's what we're gonna do in this video. Uh, I have also made some changes to the studio or what you call it. I have this fancy background. And I also invested in a new camera. I bought this one. It's a Sony SV, SZV1. And the focus on this little camera is fantastic. You will notice it when we start to film with it. And I will also do some changes to the content. I will make them shorter. And I will speak a lot more because I'm feeling more secure about my Swedish English language now. So welcome and uh, subscribe and hit the bell below. Thanks. So let's begin with the painting. And as you can see the model is masked and I am using uh, tape, regular paper and uh, liquid mask. I'm using Amos liquid mask and it's really really good and I think even if you apply it quite thick it gets dry within one hour. So now it's time to put primer on this one. So now it's time for primer and I'm always using Mr. Surfacer or Tamiya's primer on Rattlecan. Yeah, I think they are quite handy and it feels like they are sticking together better on the plastic or more adhesive. So when you take off your mask the paint won't get off. So it's really good. So now it's time to do the bottom of the fuselage. The paint is a little bit smelly, but I think it's a better choice than doing it with an airbrusher. That's all primed. So here we have it, the whole fuselage is primed. And it looks awesome. I don't know if you can see the details. So now it's time for the top color and the bottom color of this aircraft. Uh, when I started to build models I went for Amo of MIG colors. But uh, then I switched over to Tamiya which I think is a great paint. But nowadays I'm using MRP, Mr. Paint. And this is like heaven when you paint painting with it. It's easy to clean the airbrush and the finish you're getting with this paint is just awesome. This is absolutely the best paint you can get. So now I'm gonna paint the top color. So just hang on. Now it's all done. So this is how the finished looks like. And it's all ready dry. Perfect. So now it's time to paint the fuselage bottom part. And as you can see I have protected the top side since it's painted now. Uh, I don't want any overspray. 
with the light bluish color that we're gonna spray now. And for the bottom side of the fuselage I'm gonna use this one. Mr. Paint, light blue. So now we are done with the painting of the big areas. This is the top side of the fuselage and here we have the bottom side. So the next step would be to paint uh, jet nozzles and these are really hard to paint on these uh, Sukhoj airplanes. Uh, they have different gradients of different colors but uh, I will try to do my best to get a good result. Looks nice. So time for the jet engines and the nozzles. So I'm gonna paint these with black blank so I get the high contrast. I'm gonna use Alclad. So I just mask the machine and now it's time to put on the black. So now it's time to paint the nozzles with Alclad, one of the best metal colors I have used so far. So here we have one of the nozzles that I'm going to paint now and of course I'm going to paint the same color on the fuselage. So here I'm using uh, Tamiya's Weathering Masters kit. Uh, this, got, this one got burnt blue, burnt red and oil stain. And I prefer to apply it with a pencil. So now I'm doing that on the end of the nozzle to get some small variations so it doesn't look too perfect. And you really have to be careful because this stuff really bites. So I'm going through each line here with the nozzle. It's maybe hard to see, but you will definitely get some natural variations. And it won't look that plastic when it's done. So I'm doing the dark tones first. Uh, if you wonder what color I used on the back, I used Alclad Steel 112 and on the 
shiny parts I used are clad 101 aluminium. So we are almost finished here. And you can use your fingers to smooth it a little bit. I don't know if you can see, but there are some tones and variations. So now I'm gonna add that strange blue color on these metal parts. This is so typical, the SU-35 and the other planes in that family. They have really, really weird patterns on the engine plates. So, looks like this. Hope you can see it, getting some blue there. So I'm going around this one now. It doesn't have to be perfect because the nature is not uniform, so we'll apply it gently all around here. Some plates are more <laughs> bluish than others. This is how it's going to look like. So I'm trying to mimic heat from the exhaust, so I'm using uh, like more like an orange color and I put it around here. One thing when using this weather kit from Tamiya is that once it sticks you can't get it off, so you can't better less is more as we say. So don't put too much on it, on the part you're working on. And to get the best result, you should always um, put on a flat clear coat before you start doing this. And I'm using Tamiya's XF86 flat clear. Uh, it smells really good and it's, I really like that uh, flat coat. But you have to be careful when you spray it down on the subject uh, with your airbrush because uh, you should it should be like a mist just when you're applying it on the, in, in this example for an airplane. Uh, if you put put it too wet on the subject it will not be flat it will almost be like it's uh, high gloss on it so just like a small small mist on the plane or whatever you're using when you're uh, spraying with XF86 <laughs> flat clear but it's a really good product so this is how it looks now some bluish and some burnt and some colors. So now it's time to start working on the airplane and the engines. This is just a back nozzle. So now I'm trying to add a little more copper tone to the plates that are silver here uh, and when I will and when I will remove the mask there will be a silver area here that should be just silver so I want to differentiate that by adding some tones around this masking and as you can see I've done that on that side this looks a little burnish copperish. So now I'm completing this side. So 
So here I'm working on the upper side of the engine and now I'm adding some orange brownish to this blue line. It's hard to see maybe but it's easier when I'm done. One tip is not to add the fins or the surface controller before you doing this. It's much easier. So that was a big mistake from my side. sure if you can see this but it's getting there so now I'm done with the engines I spent maybe one hour on them and they look something like this and so now it's time to weather them and uh, if I put the noses in it will look something like this and uh, with some Panel lines and weathering, I think they're gonna look just fine. So now I just started to lay down the panel lines with the Amo of MIGS black wash. It looks like this. Uh, it's an oil based product, and I'm using White Spirit to clean my pencil and to clean off excess paint. I'm letting it dry for 30 to 40 minutes and then I'm just dry brushing it. Um, I think it's it's a good product. You don't have to be stressed when using it so. And it looks like this now. And uh, I will let it dry for a couple of minutes more and then I will start removing it. So this is the end of this video and uh, the next video will be online within 14 days. I'm going for a small fishing trip. So stay safe and subscribe to the channel.